and I'm joined up here by UNC Chapel Hill Chancellor Kevin Guskowitz, UNC Police Chief Brian James, and Chapel Hill Police Chief Salisa Lehu. Following their remarks today, we will take a few questions, but for now I'm going to turn it over to UNC Chancellor Kevin Guskowitz. So thank you for being here today. Uh, it's uh, sad and alarming uh, that there have now been uh, two lockdowns uh, over the past 16 days on our campus uh, where we've had to apprehend individuals who have violated the safety and well-being of our community. This afternoon at 12.54 p.m. an Alert Carolina was activated uh, because of reports at the student union of a person who brandished a weapon. Uh, UNC police reported no shots were fired. Fortunately, uh, after an hour and 15 minute lockdown, law enforcement determined that there was no longer an immediate threat to campus. We issued an all clear message at approximately 2.10 p.m. The suspect is now in custody. UNC police are working closely with Chapel Hill Police Department to gather information and continue their thorough and professional response. This incident had no relation to the shooting on our campus. From, uh, had no relation uh, to the shooting on our campus on Monday, August the 28th. However, the news of another armed person and a second lockdown on our campus is concerning and can be traumatic. As a result, we've canceled on-campus classes for the rest of the day and we will resume all classes tomorrow. I've sent a campus email with further details including mental health resources for our community members. Thank you to our faculty, our staff, and our students for their cooperation and patience as we continue to strive to keep our community safe. I want to be clear that guns are prohibited on this campus and every campus across the state of North Carolina. Today's events further underscore the importance of everyone working collectively to know our safety protocols, follow our emergency action plan, and support one another because incidents such as this are all too common. I'm grateful to the UNC Police Department, our emergency operations team, and the Chapel Hill Police Department for managing this situation quickly and efficiently. Thankfully, no one was injured. But imagine the stress, the trauma, and the anxiety that a second lockdown in 16 days has caused for our students, our faculty, and our staff. This pains me as a member of this community now for over 28 years, and I'm committed to doing everything possible to maintain the safety of all those who work, learn, and live here at Carolina. I'll now turn it over to Chief James to give you the details of what happened today. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Brian James. I'm the Chief of Police for uh, University of North Carolina. Uh, we are again disheartened by the incident that happened today on Carolina's campus. I would like to thank the UNC Police Department, the Town of Chapel Hill Police, the Orange County Sheriff's Office, the Carborough Police Department, and the North Carolina Highway Patrol for their quick response in keeping the campus community safe. Here are the updates we have to share from today's situation. At approximately 12.45 p.m., UNC Police 911 received an emergency call detailing a situation inside the Carolina Student Union. Once the situation was confirmed, UNC Police immediately took action and went on lockdown at approximately 12.54 p.m. According to witnesses, the suspect confronted an employee of Alpine Bagel, which is inside the Union, and displayed a firearm and threatened the employee. He then fled the scene in a vehicle. The suspect, Mikhail Deontay Harris, was apprehended by the town of Chapel Hill Police Department at approximately 2.45 p.m. in the 300 block of Formosa Lane. Harris was arrested on an outstanding order for arrest and was being sought in connection with the incident on Carolina's campus. UNC Police, with the assistance of the Town of Chapel Hill Police Department, is continuing follow-up on this case and charges on the suspect are pending. 
UNC police will continue to be diligent in ensuring the safety of the campus community, especially during peak times of the day, to provide reassurance to our campus community. Thank you, and at this time, I'll turn it back to Kevin. Okay, thank you. As I mentioned, we'll have time for a few questions. If you do have a question, please raise your hand. We will get a microphone to you, and we'll go first row right here. Please identify yourself and your outlet. Aaron sanchez Guerra, News and Observer. Uh, question for Chancellor and uh, also the Chief. Uh, why was the all clear issued uh, about 30 minutes before the arrest of the suspect? And, and I ask that in good faith, knowing that this situation is very different from the tragedy that happened. Um, but still, I wanted to ask that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad to answer that. Uh, we were conducting a follow-up uh, during that time and we received confirmation that the suspect was not on campus. So we had good information that we were acting on. Of course, uh, we wanted to ensure that the campus was safe. We did a number of sweeps uh, around the grounds of campus as well as the outer perimeter, and we had assurance that the, the suspect was not, in fact, on campus. Kilant Malamed, CBS 17. Regarding um, where the incident happened or where the suspect went afterwards, was there camera footage or surveillance of him? And if so, why did that not go out to the public and to news outlets to show people this armed and dangerous person they should you know, be on the lookout for and avoid, of course? We are still in the process of, re of reviewing camera footage. Uh, keep in mind, we do have a number of cameras on campus and oftentimes uh, it does take time in the midst of a situation where we're going into a lockdown and simultaneously trying to pull footage. So by the time we were able to access that footage, we had a confirmed location of the suspect and were working to, uh, to make the arrest uh, with the assistance of Chapel Hill. Hey, Chief, this is Patrick Thomas with Spectrum News One. I believe the Chancellor alluded to this earlier. I apologize. I was uh, relaying something back to a producer. But what was the connection and or no connection at all between the suspect and arriving at the Alpine Bagel Shop inside Student Union? At this time, uh, we are exploring what the relationship was. Uh, we believe that there was some time, type of connection. Uh, we certainly don't know what the motive is at this point. Uh, but that will only be discovered through, uh, through interviews of witnesses and possibly the suspect if he chooses to speak with us. In the back. Middle. Jimmy Price with ABC 11. I was speaking with students today who said that by the time they received those text alerts, they were already in a locked room. Is there a reason why the alerts came out a little bit later? Um, so I'm not sure uh, which students you were speaking with. Um, what I would say is this, is that when we respond to a situation, uh, we have to confirm it uh, first before we go into a full lockdown. Uh, that is a concern. Uh, I would say also that throughout the country there have been reports where people have made uh, false calls. So it is important that we go to the location and actually confirm before we issue a lockdown notification. Those particular students uh, may have actually witnessed something that caused them to uh, shelter in place, which that action is totally appropriate. If they actually witnessed something, that is totally appropriate. But we do have to confirm from a law enforcement perspective before we go into a full lockdown. Hi, Kelly Kendall, Carolina Week. Chancellor Guskowitz, my question is for you. I want to know, as not only as a reporter, but as a student of this campus, how do students return to campus feeling safe after not one, but two of these incidents? Yes, as I've already said, uh, this is the second uh, situation in 16 days. And uh, while, as I've already said, uh, unrelated, uh, uh, there's uh, likely to be anxiety and, and trauma uh, for our students. That's why we decided to cancel classes for the rest of the day uh, so that uh, people could uh, you know, uh, take it, take an opportunity to sit back, reflect on this. And uh, so I, I, I it, it saddens me uh, that, uh, that we, we've had two situations in, in a little over two weeks. And so uh, we've got a lot of support, uh, uh, you know, for, for the students, for the faculty, staff. Uh, I hope that they'll access any resources that they may need as they're processing this. 
And uh, as I said, we're going to do everything possible uh, to reassure uh, everyone that, that visits this campus, lives, learns, works here, uh, that this is a safe place to be. Hi, Denise McMiller with WFMY News 2. You mentioned that Michael was connected to another assault. Was that connected to a situation on campus, and was he a student? Uh, we had an incident on September 5th uh, in the town of Chapel Hill at Old Durham Road and Scarlet, in which uh, an investigation led us to seeking charges on uh, Mikkel Harris for assault related incident. Assault with what? Uh, it's uh, assault by pointing a gun, communicating threats, and going armed to the terror of the public. Was this, um, when you said there was an outstanding warrant, it was for that? For that incident, incident. related to the September 5th incident, okay. those okay. charges related to that. I have a question um, for the chancellor, but did anyone else have questions for the chief? Okay. Chancellor Gesswitz, um after the last shooting, I had heard anecdotally that there were families that were driving into Chapel Hill to pick up their freshmen, take them back home. Um, you know, I talked to a student today who has anxiety and said, just like last time, she grabbed her anxiety pills right away for a panic attack. I know you've kind of talked about this already, but what's your message really for families as well of like how do they feel safe sending um, their students here and, and entrusting them to stay here and continue their education? Sure. I mean, I think one of the things that we've learned is that uh, people process uh, and respond to these situations in, in, in different ways. It's why uh, the counselors and therapists and everyone that we've had uh, on, on campus and those resources that I've already talked about are so important. Uh, and we just want to reassure uh, everyone on campus that uh, you need to reach out. We need, you know, for to, to access those resources. We have to stand up and support one another. As I've said before, we stood strong together uh, two and you know, a little over two weeks ago in this situation. We've had a lot of parents uh, reach out to us and thank us uh, for the way in which they felt that their student had been supported uh, over over this, uh, you know, door, following that uh, tragedy from uh, August 28th. Uh, we've had those though who who, like you've already indicated, said. I need to just take my child home for, for a few days to process this. And so we want everyone to, uh, to sort of um, process this, grieve in, in the way that they need to. And uh, this situation, fortunately, as I've said, nobody was injured. But yet, twice in 16 days, uh, there will be anxiety. And uh, we, we want to just, uh, again, reassure uh, everyone that we have the support systems in place to, to, to help. Uh, we have incredible faculty here that uh, that are working with uh, students. So what we did lose uh, two uh, days of, of classes uh, uh, back uh, at the end of the month, and uh, uh, we're the faculty are working to help make up that time and work with students that needed additional time. And we'll do the same thing for those that missed class this afternoon. Hi, Carly Haynes, WRAL. I was wondering if there are any changes to your emergency response between the August 28th shooting and the incidents from today, anything that we learned from that previous incident? You know, as I said before, we, uh, our, our, we, had, a, we had a plan. We had been preparing, sadly, for, for a day like that, that you, you hope you never have to activate that plan, but we had a, a, a good plan. We have a good plan. We have a better plan today and protocol today because, uh, as we've learned from colleagues around the country who have been through situations like this, uh, that, that you have to, uh, you know, review what what happened. We've we've started that process already. Uh, we heard that uh, many of the community members wanted to have more frequent updates through different uh, means of communication, and so uh, we we acted on that already, and, and we were able to put that into to play today. So that is one of the. The, the things that we've learned. Uh, as I said, uh, there's no perfect response, but uh, I'm really pleased with the way uh, the teams, everybody, uh, uh, you know, responded today. And we will learn from today as well. I don't know, Chief, you may want to add something more. I'll just speak uh, from the, the law enforcement response, and I'll say from the August 28th incident and today's incident, everyone responded as they were supposed to. Our UNC police officers immediately organized themselves, uh, went into buildings, cleared areas, and, and our partners got here very quickly to help us establish a perimeter 
around campus and also help us to clear buildings uh, uh, as needed. So uh, we continually uh, train and we review our response and, uh, and just do everything we can just to keep this campus safe. And uh, we're very proud of the way that we responded. However, we stand here again hoping that this never happens again. Emmy Martin with the Daily Tar Heel. Um, this is follow up on a previous question, but why was there a 10 minute gap between that first 911 call and the first Alert Carolina message sent to students? So again, uh, we had to respond uh, to the area uh, and it's uh, to those that, uh, that know Carolina, known as the pit at the student union. Uh, we had to confirm what happened and that was confirmed through interviews with the staff at Alpine Bagel uh, to get exact information uh, and to just be assured that this did in fact happen before we sent an alert. Uh, we certainly don't ever want to send out an alert uh, and it's not warranted because when we have to send it out in a time when it's critical, people may not pay attention to it. So we want people to be assured that any time that alert goes out for a lockdown, that people take it very ser seriously and act accordingly. Okay, we'll take one more question here in the back row. Yeah. Yeah. What additional security measures have been put in place since those last 16 days? So we are under a process of review. We have talked about additional security measures uh, that could be response uh, to an active shooter or an active assailant. Uh, that could also involve uh, technology upgrades. Uh, those are some things that we are looking at now, but quite honestly, we were still in an after action review process from the August 28th update, and uh, many of the things that, that we may implement in the future uh, just simply, it just hasn't been enough time to implement many new measures. But like the Chancellor said, uh, one of the uh, asks from the last incident was that we update uh, more regularly with uh, information and I think we were able to do that today. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll continue to provide you more information as we have it, but that will conclude today's press conference. Thank you.